This lecture is about E. P. Thompson and the making of the English working class. Like Raymond Williams and Richard Hogarth, the cultural historian E. P. Thompson's activist scholarship emerged from adult vocational teaching. His seminal text, The Making of the English Working Class, analyzed the historical record during the British Industrial Revolution from the years 1780 to 1832. Thompson examined these years in order to catalog the role that literacy played in the evolution of working class consciousness. This process of awakening emerged from the industrial change brought on by mechanization. The making of the English working class was a unique contribution because it represented the first and so far only systematic, comprehensive and richly illustrated study of the British working class. Prior to it and continuing to the current day, sometimes consciously and sometimes not, historians wrote from the perspective of privilege and power with all of the attendant biases and condescension that is inherent in such positioning. Thompson condemned the way historians had patronizingly accounted events or developments within working class history. In some of the most moving prose, Thompson wrote in the making of the English working class, Their crafts and traditions may have been dying. Their hostility to the new industrialism may have been backward looking. Their communitarian ideals may have been fantasies. Their insurrectionary conspiracies may have been foolhardy. But they lived through these times of acute social disturbance and we did not. Their aspirations were valid in terms of their own experience, and if they were casualties of history, they remain condemned in their own lives as casualties. Our only criterion of judgment should be whether or not a man's actions are justified in light of subsequent evolution. After all, we are not at the end of social evolution ourselves, in some of the lost causes of the people of the Industrial Revolution. We may discover insights into social evils which we have not yet to cure. Thompson felt these insights deserved attention for two reasons. First, it demonstrated that lessons could be learned from the way that, in face of losing a way of life, working class culture placed a high premium on egalitarian and democratic values. And second, though many of the causes taken up by the working class in England were lost, they might still be won in those parts of the modern world still undergoing the process of industrialization and the formation of democratic institutions. Here's the takeaway. In the introduction to the making of the English working class, Thompson set about proposing a theory of class formation. There are four tenets to that theoretical proposition. The first is that class is an historical phenomenon that ceases to exist if it is observed at a given point. It is only when observing events across the trajectory of historical periods of social change do we come to see patterns to relationships, to ideas and institutions. Indeed, Thompson argued, class is defined by men as they live their own history, and in the end, this is the only definition. Number two, class descends from experience. This goes back to Thompson's insistence on the primacy of experience in class formation. Certainly, experience is the central concept in Thompson's theorizing, one that, when weaving his narrative of working-class cultural discovery, he goes back to time and again. Third, the working class has agency. It actively participates in class formation. As Thompson argued, working-class consciousness is a study of an active process, one which owes as much to agency as it does to conditioning. The working class did not rise like the sun at an appointed time, Thompson says. It was present at its own making. 
class can be defined by consciousness. This is the fourth tenet. That is to say, Thompson argues that class emerges from workers pondering, wondering about their experiences, and then constructing a framework through which to bring into being an understanding of themselves as a distinct class identity. Although he relied on some of the same official sources or records that had been instrumental in formulating prior historical accounts of the working class, what made the making of the English working class extremely valuable is its contribution by the author, its sensitivity to the notion that the working class possessed its own unique culture and that this culture could be accessed through stories folk songs, sports, games, and other organic cultural artifacts, and that they could be passed down through the generations. No doubt because Thompson had descended from the English working class, he was at an advantage in that he could look at his own experiences and knowledge base, but also his personal sensitivity to the unique and valuable contributions of working class artifacts in understanding the totality of working class culture. I'm D. Elizabeth Glasgow. See you next time.